Last week I made a video about how Tolkien and his writings were influenced by Norse mythology, so this is sort of going to be an extension of that. And that's because this following story is based on Ragnarok. Now if you don't know what Ragnarok is, let me first explain that. Ragnarok is a story of the end of Asgard, and the deaths of the gods as featured in the Edda. This means, but not limited to, Thor, Tyr, Odin, Freyr, Loki, and Heimdall, which makes sense considering Ragnarok means fate of the gods in Old Norse. So Dagor Dagoroth, the final battle, which is our topic of the video today, bears resemblance to both this and the story of Armageddon in the Bible. It is also known as the second prophecy of Mandos, who is the doomsman of the Valar. He remembers everything that was, and everything that's to come, and he resides in his own halls just as Evolva does. This story was abandoned by Tolkien and was replaced with the War of Wrath. The reason for that is explained in History of Middle-earth Volume 10, Morgoth's Ring. The second prophecy of Mandos had now therefore definitively disappeared. The passage was used to form a conclusion to the published Silmarillion. This means that Tolkien didn't want to conclude it there because the Lord of the Rings had come after and he didn't want to mimic mythology so much. And this makes sense when you read Letter 131. This legendarium ends with a vision of the world, its breaking and remaking, the recovery of the Cimmerilli, and the light before the sun, after a battle which owes, I suppose, more to a Norse vision of Ragnarok than to anything else, though it is not much like it. Even though we changed it, we don't have much to go off of when it comes to exact influences, and I still find it all really interesting, so let's draw up some of our own comparisons from it and tell the story anyway. So it all began when Morgoth is finally able to somehow break free from the void where he is imprisoned and leaving through a portal known as the Door of Night. Obviously it isn't guarded well enough though because Morgoth leaves and resurrects his servants whether they be orcs, dragons, trolls, spiders, balrogs or any other creature who has ever followed him and then he destroys the sun and the moon. Just like in Ragnarok when Loki escapes, he recruits his followers and the sun and the moon are also destroyed except it's eaten by the wolves Skull and Hati. While everyone in Middle-earth, from men, dwarves, elves, and hobbits, Tolkas, Manwë, Turin, and Irandil meet up in Valinor and rally up against Morgoth and his forces one last time. Not only is this the fight of the living, but all of those who died in the past will also return from the Halls of Mandos. Also, I wanted to mention this in the last video, but unfortunately I didn't, and basically I just want to say that Surtur, the one who destroys Asgard in Ragnarok, seems to be similar to the Balrogs. But anyway, let's get back to the main point. A huge battle ensues and there has nothing been like it before. Amongst the great men, elves, dwarves, and Ainur even, are the greatest of foes. Glaurung, the dragon that Turin slayed many years ago, returns as well as Ancalagon, black. And with him are many other dragons, and there is a total carnage everywhere. Once Morgoth and Tolkas come face to face in hand to hand combat, Turin delivers the final blow by stabbing Morgoth in the heart with his black sword, Gurthong. In another version of the story, however, it's Eonwe that ends up killing him. And in the final version, Turin doesn't actually kill Morgoth, but rather Ancalagon. Unless the prophecy of Andreth the Wise Woman should prove true, that Turin in the last battle should return from the dead, and before he left the circles of the world forever, should challenge the great dragon of Morgoth Ancalagon the Black, and deal him the Deathstroke. Afterwards, when the spirit of Fëanor is released from the halls of Mandos and they recover the Silmarils from the earth, the sea, and the sky, he gives them all to Yavanna and she restores the light of the two trees once destroying the Silmarils. And so Arda will finally be reborn from ashes to start anew and the second music of the Ainur, sung alongside the elves and the men, will be better than the first. This is the same in both Norse mythology and in Christianity as well as several other religions that the end isn't really the end but rather the dawn of new life. Thanks for watching. If you found this video interesting, don't forget to leave a like. Remember to hit subscribe and like the beacons on your way out. And until our next meeting, I bid you farewell.